What's up all my fellow YouTubers? Today's video is about, well let's wind the clock back a little bit. Sometime back, or actually several videos back, you know, I've done tests about how to do the crankshaft position sensor, uh, throttle position sensor, so on, so on, so on. Um, I had a subscriber point out to me that I didn't show where to set the meter at. Okay, maybe sometimes I'll take for, I forget in the most of dealing with the camera, showing, uh, showing demonstrating how, how to do this stuff that sometimes I forget the little minute details. So, in picking up from that detail, I'm gonna do a tutorial video on how to use a multimeter, both high voltage and low voltage, and the different various settings that you can do with it. Cool, sweet. Some people can find that being very simplistic, but some people don't know how to use the meter. And also, I've got two different meters I'm gonna be showing, demonstrating with. One is an auto ranging meter. One is a, you know, you gotta set it within the parameters of the voltage that you're reading, okay? So, everyone, if you have not subscribed, you need to hit that subscribe button down below so you'll be notified of these videos when I release them. I try to make them educational, also entertaining when I can. So everyone, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that thumbs up when it's all over with. So, you know what, let's just quit the gabbing. Let's do it! Boop. I got you guys out here to my HVAC unit. We're going to show you how to test the legs of a 240 volt system. Now, let's make a little disclaimer here. Unless you are very, 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 very comfortable working with electricity, do not do this. Call a professional, okay? This stuff doesn't bother me whatsoever. Um, I was raised working on cars and motorcycles, like I've mentioned before. But I've had a few jobs before. So I've had a pretty wide variety of different skills in life that, you know, kind of my situation has put me into to where I had to learn it or sink or swim, you know? So this stuff doesn't bother me a bit. So we're going to take our black lead, and you see right here where it's grinding against the chassis, this is going to be your common leg here. Touch one side, and you see the meter, 121 volts, come to the other leg, 121 volts, both legs are good. So now, but you guys are thinking, wait a minute, 240 volts, ain't that what it's supposed to be? So what you do is you take both your leads, go across this leg and this leg. 243 volts and there you go you notice where my meter was setting at again I showed you that it was on AC setting because you got the little wavy line on top this is a ranging style means which you guys will see more of it when I do the DC side 200 volts if I drop that down there then do on the 120 volt side no problem okay because it's under the 200 volt limit here but if I turn it over to 600 because 240 volts is above the, two, uh, the 200 here of course you want to bring it up to the next level which will be the 600 okay that is what you do so this is one that you do the ranging on you have ranging mean over here on the DC side 220 200 600 volts you got to put it within the window you to set your settings with inside the window of where your voltage is going to be like for when we do uh, automotive stuff you want to put it on 20 because 12 volts is below that 20 right there right here but we'll get into that now this is an auto ranging meter Auto ranging means you really don't have to pay much attention to where you put it at. That gun, get out of there. You still got to have your proper settings as far as AC, DC, such like that. Okay, I put it here. You see the boat, the wavy line. That's AC current, house current. And see, it's only got the one thing there. So it carries the voltage, anything from all the way down to whatever. It can be five volts. Or it can go all the way up to your 240 volt system. Okay. So there you go. We got that set up. Leg here. Go leg here. And there you go. 121. Come off the other leg. 121. Both legs. 243, 244, it keeps bouncing. But anyway, with the auto ranging style meters, you don't have to worry about is it above or below a window of voltage that you're testing, okay? So, 
that's pretty much how you're going to do the AC side stuff. I came out here just for you guys. Turned my thermostat down to where the unit wouldn't kick on while I was out here testing. Just to show you guys how to do high voltage testing. Okay? It is 12 degrees out here. My butt's going back in the house. Let's roll. Now here's a typical wall plug. Now some of you electricians are going to say, uh, no, that's not typical. And you're correct, it's not. It's kind of old. This house was built, I don't know, somewhere around 52 or something like that. So, yeah, this still got some of the older school, old school plugs in it that does not have the ground post in it. So, with that being said, y'all can't blast me on it because I've already called you out on it. So, we're going to do an AC. We did the uh, outside, the uh, HVAC unit. Now, we're going to do inside, which is going to be the 120 volt. Your meter, you got the little squiggly line right here. Put it on 200 because... 120 volts is under the 200. Now you can use the 600, it won't freak it out or nothing. So, but use the 200 for the wall plugs in your house to test is this wall plug working? So, what we'll do is you reposition here. See so if I sit thing down here, you guys can't see it. I'll just kind of hold it up here. You guys see it right about. Look at the viewfinder, make sure the numbers show. Then we take this, stick it in there. Get in there, dang it. Here we go. 121.7. We got voltage. So, yep, it's a good wall plug, which I already knew. Cause this is this big wall wart right here plug box. It goes to my home alarm, so I know it's good. So, there you go. 120 volts on that wall plug. And again, this is one of those things. If you're not comfortable working with electricity, don't go sticking things in the light socket because, well... It could really not end too well for you. So, anyway, let's move on to the 12 volt stuff. Before we get into the demonstration of how to use multimeters for automotive and some lightweight home electrical use, I want to show you guys a little something to make that is absolutely invaluable to have around. It makes life so much easier. Now, this particular multimeter here, and it's an ideal, the brand is called Ideal 61 340 model number. This one comes, these little alligator clips that goes on in the leads. It's very sweet and nice meter. Uh, but this Klein Tools here does not. It's a Klein Tools model number MM300. This one right here is a much more basic model. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles that the Ideal brand does. So with this one right here being said, one thing it didn't come with was the alligator clips. Those things are so handy to have around. Now, this what you see here is an old set of leads of a meter that kind of bit the bucket, or bit the dust, kicked the bucket. Yeah, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, we're going to use these leads here. But the one I want is the black one, the negative side of the leads. So I'm going to get rid of the red one, get it out of my way. Notice what I had laying here? We're going to make us a alligator clip. Now... I started to make this and I thought, wait, I'm gonna show you guys how what I'm doing, how to do this. Look real close. That alligator clip was nice and round right there. But you see where I kind of already collapsed it in? That's where I was about to go ahead and you know, make it off camera. Then dawned on me, hey, why don't I just show you guys how to do this so you can make your own? Again, old set of clips here, old set of leads. Now you got one or two choices. You could also cut the lead here if you want. Then Feed up inside here, and screw it on that little screw right there. I mean, that's a very common thing to do, not a problem. Or run your wire up inside there and solder it. That's another good thing you can do. But if you just want a quick and dirty method of doing this, whenever you collapse that in, and what I did was took pliers and just squeezed on one side right there, which uh, collapsed one side because those ends were butted together. So when I collapse that in like that, what I can do now is take this. Put it right there, take these, put it around it right there, and give a good squeeze. And because I collapsed those two pieces in, it allows that metal to overlap and squeeze down on that pin of that lead. Turn loose. Oh, that's what happened. Locked up. Get down here on this side. You see? 
Now see, so it's just a little bit loose. So that actually can work to your benefit to where you can clamp this on the sticky center and let it hang. But if you want it a little more snug, take them apart and be very, very gentle in collapsing it just a little bit more. If I can. Then you take, okay, it's tighter, but I want a little bit more out of it. So, because I squeezed it down here on this end, that's where it's snugged up at. So let's come up here a little bit and snug it up a little bit more up here. Little gentle squeeze so you control how much you're squeezing that down. Okay, so now I've got a tight fit. There it is. See there? Now all you gotta do for your ground side of your circuits, be it AC, DC, or whatever it is you're testing, AC being house current, DC being uh, automotive current, Take a little clip right there and lock that baby in place and you're good to go. All right, sweet, let's do this. Do it, first thing we're gonna do, I've got a couple batteries here. Let me get them in the camera shot here. Now, each one of these, see, that's a six volt battery. And that was a six volt too, I think. Nope, that's a 12 volt. Nonetheless, this battery right here, let's set up this meter first okay so I'm going to take this negative lead out here the black one and our lead that we just made plug that in there because we're going to use that clip on the negative side of the wires here now whatever we test this is batteries like it Smaller version of what would be in the in your car or truck, Jeep, whatever the case may be. This is a general um, tutorial, not just about Jeeps. So now what we can do is put this, you look, right there. The bolt, the V bolt. Then you see dot, dot, dot with a straight line on top of it. That is your DC current. That is what you will use to test automotive, okay? Okay, batteries here are 12 volt. You know, in your in your vehicle, in your car, your truck, your Jeep, whatever, motorcycle, whatever, is gonna be 12 volt typically. Now, some of your older cars are gonna be six volt, but that's kind of another story. Turn this over to 20 because 12 volts is under the 20 volt range. You can't if you go to two. It'll still work, but it'll error the screen out. See, we've got this nice LCD screen right here. If you go too low, it'll just error the screen out. So you want to go above whatever voltage you're going to be reading. In this case, we're looking at 12 volts. <clears throat> okay, there we go. So we've got a ground lead hooked up here, which leads to a positive lead here. And we're going to come across this, and we're going to touch that. And look at there. 14.69 volts. That's because I have these uh, right here wired up in series, which is going to take this voltage plus this voltage and add them together. Um, yeah, I know it should be a higher voltage. Now, this right here needs to be charged up. So, actually, the voltage is really low. Because if I go just ground to this one, see, it's only 8.65 volts. And this is actually a 12 volt battery. So, being only 8 volts, I was doing some testing on some stuff that required 12 volt. And being that I have a charged battery, if I wire these two right here from series, which gives me the 14.6, which is more than enough to do automotive testing. Okay, this is a ranging. Ranging means you've got ranges of voltages you have to set your dial to to accommodate whatever voltage you're testing, okay? So now let's look at another meter that's a bit more high tech. And it is called an auto ranging, and you'll see why. Turn this off. We're going to unplug our negative lead because we're going to use it in the other meter also. <clears throat> so we're unplugging this one. Put that one because that's where our clip is. Now, set this up here. Again, remember our voltage settings. Now, notice this does not have any ranges as in <clears throat> 2 volts, 20 volts, whatever, whatever, whatever as it climbs up, okay? Because this one's 
does an auto arranging. It does. It takes care of its own settings on the in internally. Okay. So, doot doot. DC. If you look right there close on the display, you'll see DC voltage. Okay. And let's set that big bright nice screen up right there where you guys can see it. <clears throat> and I done knocked it over. There's that. Now we're gonna test the battery, and you'll see that it automatically ranges to itself, auto ranging. Um, it'll go, I'm not sure this particular meter right here, because most about everything I do is either home uh, 120 volt or 240 volt uh, auto, uh, home stuff, which is AC. And then of course all the automotive stuff I do that you guys see in the videos. So anyway, 14.7, there's the voltage and that's how you test DC voltage. DC meaning direct current. AC voltage means alternating current. And again, if you're looking at your meters, um, the V right there with the little squeaky line above it, that's going to be your AC because if you flip it back here, you'll see the display says AC, alternating current. And it flips over to DC, and you've got a straight line above it, then with the little Dotted line below it, that's your DC current, means direct current. Cool, sweet. Let's set up for the next test. Now let's do like a simulated real world testing of what you would use the DC voltage for on your meter, okay? I'm using the auto ranger here, the auto ranging meter. And so what we're going to be doing is, this is a typical fuse block setup. This is, here is actually my power distribution center that's going to go on my Jeep that's going to control my lights, my winches, and stuff like that. And um, my onboard air also. But this is pretty much, if you pop your hood, you see your power distribution center that's underneath your hood. This is pretty much the way it's going to look anyway. So what I've got, remember the battery pack I had a moment ago? Let me just pan around here for you. So here's the big fat red cable coming out of the power distribution center here. Power distribution center. I'll get out in a minute. Come around through here on this back side is the black cable that's going to ground on the batteries, okay? So, redo my lead. That was almost touching that positive side. Now, there we go. So, the big fat red cable here is touching the positive cable, positive post. Big a black cable coming around through here is on the ground. So, in a in the car type testing, what you would do is you take your alligator clip or your negative um, lead if you don't have the alligator clip on it, touching ground, touching the block, touching the firewall, touching the bolt in the firewall, something, but you want ground or you can hang it on the negative battery post. I do that more often because like where your battery clamp comes together and that bolt going through it, I'll hang the lead point down inside that negative side of the battery post and use that. It works really, really well. So now let's get back over here. Now, here's the power distribution center. It's got the relays. We're not going through a whole relay testing here because I got totally separate videos for that stuff. But what we are going to do is we got our auto ranging set up here and it's just dancing around because it's waiting on me to do something. So, got the power hooked up as you've seen over on the battery. So let's see if we got voltage. Let's test here. Ah, oh, look at there. We got. 14.56 touch on the other side of the fuse 14.56 means that fuse is good touch here 14.56 14.56 and look at these little tiny fuses here the fuses in there you think hmm there's one unblown we can touch right on top of the metal post that's in on these fuses there there see Sometimes you get some of these little fuses, the little posted down there so far that's kind of hard to hit them. There they go. There's that one. Now, if you go one side of the fuse and go to, one side of the fuse and you got power, and then you go to the other side of the fuse and you do not have power, that could be a good indication that your fuse is blown. But there's another test for that, and I'll show you how to do that here in a moment. So we'll touch all the fuses here for the kicks and giggles. Fourteen five six. This is a typical situation of what you would use your DC voltage setting for. Okay, there's that. 
Now I'll tell you what, I'm gonna switch meters. I'm gonna go to the one that has the manual ranging area in it. So the people who have that that type of meter can know what to do, how to set up their meter, okay? Let me switch these out. Show you guys something on the meter real quick. Here's your typical lesser expensive style meters that still perform very well. You can get some meters that's down to you know 10 15 bucks it still do more than enough that you need to do diagnosed uh, issues with your vehicle or even home electrical issues you're going to have the 10a which is normally like you measuring how much amperage pull is on a particular circuit and this is good for tracing down uh, if you've got a parasitic uh, drag like your battery keeps going dead and you don't know why is it doing it why is it doing this you can pull your bat positive battery cable off put this in line with the circuit and they'll say hey there's a you know a one amp load being pulled from the battery when it really shouldn't be because you got your vehicle turned off the keys are even in your pocket or something but something is pulling your battery dead this can tell you that and then you can trace where that amp load's coming from so and your common here is always going to be where your black post goes okay here is typically on these style, style meters is where your red's going to go uh, about for every test you're going to go here because you see the boat symbol the v the ohm symbol is like an upside down U. Diode, continuity symbol, microamps and milliamps. This is typically where you're going to put your positive lead at right there. Okay. Then we, our ground, our negative lead, our common, goes right there. Now we're testing 12 volt negative here. Okay. So what we're going to do is. 12 volts, remember that, or on the high side, you're going to get up to about 14 volts if you've got your vehicle running and the alternate is charging. So you look at your voltage DC here, which has got the straight line above the top, dot, 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 line right there, okay? Straight line with dots right here, kind of like a Morse code symbol, I guess you might say. Volt right there. So you got 200 uh, milli volts, 2, 20, 200, 600 volts. DC, direct current, automotive current. So what we're going to do is set it for 20. 20 is because we're testing 12 to 14 volts on a, uh, on a car, vehicle, on a vehicle, truck, car, Jeep, whatever, motorcycle. There are some at 6 volt, but we're not going there. So we turn it to 20 because your 12 to 14 volts that we got test is under that 20 amp number, obviously. So now we set this up here to where you guys can see it. So now that we've got that set on 20, we're going to do just like we did on the auto ranging. We're going to touch posts. See, 1438. 14, 143. And go across the other fuses. There's that. Oh, that's my other one over here. The big, nice one. It's telling me to turn it off because it's got that little beep beep symbol on it that says turn it off dude you're gonna kill the battery after it does that for a moment it'll after it beeps at you a couple times it'll actually shut itself off so therefore it's conserving your battery life but you see as i touch each one of those you see i got voltage coming across it so that one tells you, you got voltage coming into each one of those posts of the fuse, but if you, if you touch this side of the fuse and then touch that side of the fuse and you get voltage on both sides, that means that your fuse is good. Like you can see the big post on this uh, 60 amp here. Touch it on this side, touch it on this side. If you have voltage on one side and do not have it on the other, that's gonna mean your fuse is bad. Now, there's another test for that. Let's do that one. Because there's a, a test called continuity. There's two main tests on a vehicle that you're going to do. 12 volts, where am I getting 12 volts at, okay? Then uh, your continuity. Those are your two biggest tests that you're going to do on a car, truck, Jeep, whatever. So let's set up and do a continuity test now. We're going to do a continuity test, meaning continuity is whenever you have got a connection, like this wire right here, for instance, okay? We got the little fancy alligator clip. Let's ignore that for the moment, or you can look at it. I don't care. Um, bring this out of the way so get that out of the shot so you guys can see. Common sense says if you put electricity here, and this is hooked to the bulb on this side, that it's going to go in here. It's going to cycle through the wire, 
and go out here. Which means, because this is one continuous wire, from this end here to this end here, you're going to have continuity. The electricity c continues to pass through the wire. Continuity continues. Again, the electricity goes in here, and it continues to pass through the wire and goes out here. So you have continuity. So, by testing continuity, what we're going to do is we're going to start out with this meter here. And to test continuity, uh, let me find something to, yeah, we'll just use this. What you got to look for is right there. See the little, kind of like a sound speaker right there? That little symbol right there is got, this little symbol right here is called a diode to test diodes and stuff. This particular thing right here means sound or continuity in the continuity testing. The reason that is uh, like a sound progress, I kind of kind of like a sound projection type thing. So we're going to turn it over there. Then we're going to take our leads and to see if our continuity is passing through correctly, we take the ground lead here. Touch it. Hear the beeping? That's because I'm touching these leads together here. That means the electricity that... It, what happens is the meter is taking sending voltage out of here through the tip of this right here. And right now we don't have continuity because I'm not touching these leads together. But the electricity is coming from this red passing through the wire coming out the tip of this right here, but whenever I touch this, what happens is we have now have continuity because the voltage is coming through here that the test voltage is coming through the red wire, going into the black wire, and going into the black post here, which means it's sending a, single, uh, sending a signal here. This wire is receiving this signal, which tells the meter that that circuit is good it has continuity or that sometimes continuity is bad we'll get into that story in another moment another time so in this case we want to test our leads to make sure they're connected properly they're not broken anywhere along the wire we have continuity we got good leads okay so really we're not concerned with looking at the lcd right now so we just listen for the sound this wire we used for an example a moment ago. We're going to touch this end here. Now, heck, let's go to clip to clip. What the heck? It don't really matter at this point. Go here. Then we'll touch this end of the wire. All right. Oh, never mind. This wire beside here. Look right there. See the little wire? It's not touching this right here at all. So guess what? We did not have continuity. But if we take our alligator clip, clip it onto the bare end of that wire right there then touch that going now we have continuity we had it on this and that wire down inside here was not touching the alligator clip then we touched the red lead here to send the signal through because that naked end of the wire here was not touching the alligator clip we did not have continuity but now that I got this clip right there and it's touching that, so now we should have continuity. Yeah. See the clip is actually touching this right here, so we got continuity. Okay, so that's the simple you no know, end-to-end -end wire. Let's do something a little bit different now. Using this terminal strip. Now you got a strip here and a strip here. Each one of these metal rails are obviously separate. So if we touch over here. What we do not have. What is it we do not have? We do not have continuity because these two pieces right here are not connected. But if we touch here, we got continuity. Meaning the signal's coming out of the red wire, touching this strip right here, go through the strip into the black wire and going back to the meter. The meter says, Oh good, we got signal. Sweet. That is continuity. What else can we use continuity for? I've got a few examples laid out here. All right, looky here. See that fuse? That's a 20 amp. Obviously, it's good, okay? But like I showed you in that power distribution center a moment ago, you can test these 
to find out they're good without even pulling them. So I want to take put my lead right there. We'll touch this side. We got a good fuse because the signal is passing through the fuse and we have continuity. Now if you got the uh, fuse is still plugged into the power, distrib power distribution center, clip it on because you look real close on the end of your fuses right there. See those little metal tabs right there? You can touch those. As I showed you in that um, fuse block, that relay block, we'll put the uh, ground clamp right there on that one. Touch up here. We have a good fuse. We have continuity because the current is passing through the red, red one, passing through the fuse and going into the black one, going back to the, the, to the meter. The meter saying, oh cool, my signal has returned. Okay, so what else can we do this with? Switches. Do we have a bad switch or do we have a good switch? We do not know. Let's test it. Put our little alligator clip on here. I really don't know if this thing's turned the position of the switch is on or off right now, to be honest with you. Apparently, it's in off position because we do not have what? Continuity. Okay, I've got the clip on, the alligator clip here. Got this stuck through the hole. You got it braced up so it holds good. Don't flip the switch. We got switches on position right there. Off position. On position. Off. So then if you can try to figure out, if you want your switches all to be oriented one certain all, all off positions are down with this, the flip uh, toggle pointing downward, you know to put your switch in this position here because it's pointing downward in the off position. Whenever you look across your dashboard after putting all your switches in and it's flipped upward, you know that switch is in the on position. Off. On. Off. On. Sweet. Alright. Now let's get a little more complicated. Woo -hoo. You think to yourself, Dad burn. There's a whole bunch of posts back here and I ain't sure what going where. The easiest thing to do is get, is, is get the uh, schematics for these switches and figure it out that way. But this is a from a winch that I have yet to finish wiring up across those posts look we have nothing we still have nothing so this is what you do here wait a minute sometimes go this side and this is what you do to figure out your posts on your switch on this point test at that time there we go kind of weird but anyway we know that those two right there because I'm not flipping the switch right now. See my fingers? Don't flipping switches. Then I flip the switch. That gives them two. That's saying that these two right here are now connected. Here. No beeping. No continuity. I push the switch. We got continuity. So we know when the switch is in, pushing that position here in, it makes contact on these two posts here. Then you mark these two right here saying, okay, these two have continuity when the switch is in that position. Then you move on to the next pair of... Um, Post find the find the switch positions on those and so on so on so on keep doing that we're not gonna get into the whole thing on that because honestly I would just download the schematics for this and call it the day because that's a pain in the butt all right what we got here anybody recognize it most of your cars there's one name called a Harrison switch for them but actually just a door jam switch because whenever you close your door this right here gets pushed in and it separates that contact right there on the end. 
which turns off your dome light inside your interior and stuff. Cool. All right. So we take a look at this here because that's going to be your chassis ground because this right here screws into your body. Then down here we got continuity. Okay, let me set this up where I can push it. Okay. Yeah, maybe we got it. Okay, so now we're going to touch here. We got continuity. You close the door on your vehicle, you break connection. You no longer have continuity, so therefore it turns off your interior lights. Open your door. It closes the current, so you have continuity because the current continues to pass through the switch, turns on your dome light and your interior lights and such. Close the door. It pushes that switch in. See? Pretty darn handy, ain't it? Sweet. All right. What can we do next? Let's see what we figure out to do next. I also want to point out real quick that you know, on the auto ranging meter, right there, just look for that little symbol here that kind of looks like you know a series of lines being projected out right there. Kind of like a speaker speaking out or whatever. And oftentimes you'll see the diode symbol at the side of it too. You know what? I'll tell you what, I will set up another uh, test for you. Because some meters, very rare, that, you know, the newer meters, that you do not have continuity testing but if the meter is not set up with a little beep beep thing let me show you how that works okay we're going to go back to this meter right here and here's how we do continuity testing on a meter that does not have uh, da, 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 dun, dun, where the crap we go there it is there's a little icon again for continuity the little speaker like i'm shooting sound out there type thing you not know, like i've done the beepy thing but over here look for your little symbol that says ohm symbol it's like a upside down horseshoe honestly that is your ohm or resistance symbol and you've got a range right here on these 200 2k 20k 200k and 2 meg okay so what we're going to do is we just set it for 200 right here now doing a continuity test it really doesn't make a hill of beans difference whenever you go from one end of the wire to the other end of the wire if you have no resistors or any type of circuitry in between point to point, you can use any of this if you want. No, for any of the ohm side of your meter, okay? So I'll sit here, this here, and this right here will vary. It says OL right here. Most meters gonna say OL because it's like an open circuit. Because we have no leads touching, we got an open circuit, okay? And some of them will read, I just put a number one up there. Some will put a zero or a letter O or something like that. Different meters do different things. When the circuit is open, sitting in the own position, this one does OL. Um, I had another meter that showed one all the time until you put it together, then it done its, done its magic. Uh, my leads are tangled up. What a mess. Anyway, then, I mean, different meters do different things, but we got ohms open circuit because nothing's touching okay now remember our continuity test a moment ago when we had touched the leads together we got beep remember that cool good job now let's do a continuity test without the beep beep stuff we'll take the alligator clip and just clip it on the end of that watch what happens get some junk out of the way now look at this it goes to 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.4 just fluctuating a little bit that means that you've got a closed circuit. Now that 0 0.4, 0 0.3, it's just gonna fluctuate. Sometimes, you know, some will go to zero. You no, know, it just varies. I'm trying to make sure you guys. Ooh, that's worse. That'll work. But as long as you're going near zero, near zero, you know you've got a, con a continuity. You got continuity amongst your wiring. Okay. So this is for kicks and giggles. Let's use our old raggedy switch here. Or better yet, no, let's do something more real world. Let's test this fuse. Do we have continuity in this fuse? We don't have a beepy thing on our meter because it's a cheaper one, you know. So we'll take this, clamp it on the end of that. We'll touch this post. And you gotta kinda wait for it, it's gotta do its magic. And 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.9. It's just fluctuating near zero. 
And you kind of notice if a movie's around too much, it just doesn't want to settle in. So what you got to do is get it in position and be very, very still. Obviously, I can't. What, what the f There we go. Now I'm being very, very still and look, it's near zero. Most of the time the meter won't go will not go all the way out to zero, okay? In a perfect world it would, but hey, guess what? It don't. So there we are. We're sitting at point three pretty rock steady. Which means we have continuity through this fuse, which means the fuse is good. Yay, good fuse. Okay, let's do the switch for the fun of it. Okay, we've got a cheaper uh, meter. Again, we're playing scenarios here, okay? Cheaper meter that does not have the little beep-beep thing. Okay, we've got our leads in the proper places on the switch. Look, it says OL, which means open circuit, okay? It means we've got no continuity. Flip the switch and hold it. Well, I say it's a momentary switch. Now, make sure you got connections. Sit very still because it doesn't like you to move around much. Look at that. We've got near zero. The switch is in the on position. So now we have continuity through the switch. See? Pretty simple. And that, like I said, that is one of those tests right there. The most meters, most of your today's up-to-date meters has got the continuity testing to where, you know, you got the beep-beep thing. Back around here. Most of them have this feature here. So, but if you do not have that fe feature that has a little beep, then use your resistance settings and ohms, okay? Not very difficult at all. We're going to do a quick demonstration on the dial thing. We can do a quick little uh, continuity test just to show, but I want to show you something a little bit different with the more the auto-ranging ones because they're a bit more high-tech. Your dial, remember, as I showed you a moment ago, there is your little symbol for continuity. The little, it's like a speaker throwing a sound out there. Turn your dial to that for continuity. But if you look, look at the, the dial this is mega ohms we don't want to measure ohms which we can watch we'll put that there where you guys can see it we'll take our leads alligator clip that baby to the end of it look what it does this one pretty much zeroes out but it bounces out you know one two three four like okay. it's pretty close to zero that means we have continuity through our leads that is good but what is it we do not have we don't have the beep okay and so you know you would think a higher end meter like this, and I say higher end, this is like a $60, $80 meter, would have the beep. It does, but you've got to set the setting. All right, we disconnect our leads. Select button, push select and watch the display. Ohms, bolts, uh oh, ferrets. Look up here, right there, you see the little, there's that little symbol that matches this symbol, means it's gonna go beep. So let's go with the beep, let's do the beep, do the beep, do the beep. We're gonna go beep. Notice something too, the other meter, the lesser expensive one, the orange one, it had a little bit of lag time whenever I go like this. It's like you almost had to pause and wait for it to start beeping. This is much faster. Pretty much instantaneous. That's the difference between a lesser expensive meter and a more quality one. This right here is a pretty sweet little setup right here. It does a lot of different things. Um, it's got the temperature probe to where you can take plug the probe in here and stick it inside your radiator while it's running to get the temperature reading off your radiator see if you're running 180, 190, whatever the case may be. Um, this right here is a really nice meter. It's got a lot of bells and whistles. For the auto ranging ones, you may have to do the select button to set it up for the tone. That varies from one machine to another. This particular model right here, this particular setting does four different readings. 
So you set it there, and then you cycle it to the reading that you want here, which we want continuities because we want the sound. And you see right up there's the little sound symbol. <clears throat> and there you go. It's Ideal Brand 61-340. Pretty sweet little meter, honestly. <clears throat> my buddy Wayne gave me that one. He uh, There's a blue 2,000 mile TJ that's in my videos quite often. And he gave me that one. So this right here doesn't have the backlight feature, but it does have the continuity. And this right here is probably 25 bucks or so. I forget what I paid for this right here. Okay, let's set up for another continuity test. Another demonstration of what you would use continuity for. Got our alligator clip here on this red wire. What this red wire does for this uh, switch pod is that it provides 12 volts to go into my switches, which makes the bottom part illuminate, light up. And whenever I turn on the switch, it makes the top part of the switch light up also, indicating that switch is turned on or that circuit is active and closed. And so whenever that turns on, that upper part illuminates, sends electricity through this big long wire and out the ends of these wires, which is then connected to my relay box, the thing you guys seen a moment ago where I was testing the fuses on it. This is the part that activates that. So whenever I turn the switch on, one of these wires is going to have electricity coming out of it. But I honestly do not know which one's which. So what I would have to do when I go to install it, I would give me a pad and pencil, write down, okay, side lights, which is going to be my rock lights. <clears throat> my side lights here, I've got that switch turned on. I don't know which one of these wires belongs to the side light switch. So let's touch these. Do you hear anything? Do you hear continuity? Does it go beep? Nope, no beep. No continuity. Touching this wire. No beep. No continuity. Touch this wire. No beep. No continuity. Touch the red wire. No beep. No continuity. White wire. No beep. Crap. No beep, no continuity. And literally, I do not know which wire goes to that. Green wire, no beep, no continuity. So I, I really, I think we have narrowed it down because it's the last wire. But look at that. We got continuity because we now we know this orange wire goes to where the switch that says side lights on it, which would be my rock lights. What I'll do then is take on my pad, write down side light switch orange wire so whenever I hook this to my relay box that I showed you guys a moment ago that I've got laying around here somewhere I don't know what they can do with it I already put it back up so this will hook up to that relay box I showed you guys a moment ago when I was testing the fuses and such this will go to the relay that will activate activate my rock lights so there that, that is another good feature that you can use continuity for it's really honestly a big toss-up as to which one of the features I use the most when I'm doing Oh, it's, it's telling me to turn the crap off But anyway, there we go Because I wasn't doing anything Battery conservation So honestly, it's a really a major toss-up as to which feature I use the most uh, on a G, on my Jeep for instance <clears throat> or on my motorcycle whatever is that whenever I'm testing for voltage, 12 volts coming out of a particular fuse uh, block, uh, so for instance, if you want an accessory fuse, you'll take this red, no, you'll ground your black lead, you'll touch this to a fuse in place, you'll turn the key off. If you've got no voltage, then you turn your key on just in the run position or in the accessory position, not starting the vehicle, just in the run or accessory position. Then you got voltage, that is an accessory port accessory power um, <clears throat> accessory fuse because you've only got power to it when it's in the accessory position of the key of the your uh, ignition key but if you touch the particular um, fuse and you've got power with the key turned off the keys are in your hand or in your pocket and you've got power to it that particular battery post or that particular fuse post is going directly to the battery so you got 12 volts all the time then you move over to the next one and you got no power and I'm, I'm acting like I'm simulating on a fuse block here, okay? Like that thing I had a moment ago. Uh, anyway, here it is. I guess I didn't put it up. I just moved it out of the way. So, for instance, I'm not going to hook anything up because I know how this thing's wired. 
But say for instance, I was touching this one right here, and I had power. As soon as I touched it, my keys were in my hand, okay? And bear with me, we'll play, we'll play make-believe here. The keys are in my hand, but I've got power to this one right here. It means that this particular fuse is going directly to my battery, and I, I'll have power all the time. So it's a battery plus uh, some um, schematics uh, uh, designations. Then I jump over here to this fuse, and whenever I touch, I test this one, I've got no voltage on it, okay? So again, let's play a make-believe here, showing you guys how to do a difference between accessory voltage and battery voltage. On accessory voltage, I'll touch it, and I was like, okay, I got no power. I'll touch the other side of the fuse. I still got no power. Hmm. Turn the key. Put it in the run position, or you can turn it backwards on some vehicles, put it in the accessory position. Either way, I typically, if I'm going to don't start the vehicle, but turn the key to the point to where it would be in the run position. Don't start it. Just just to the point of where you don't. Just stop to the point of where you would not start the vehicle. If you know what I'm saying, where you would start the vehicle. You know what I'm saying. Then all of a sudden I've got voltage going to this fuse. Okay, I touch here. I got voltage. I got touch here. I got voltage. Which means in the accessory position or run position, I'll have voltage to that particular fuse, and I've got it on both sides, which means the fuse is good. That means that is a an accessory plus circuit. This one will be a battery plus circuit because it's got voltage all the time, regardless of where the key's at. The other fuse only has power whenever the key is in the run position or the accessory position, which means that's an accessory positive a circuit. So that's how you would test you know, from a battery plus to an accessory. And normally what you use those type of circuits for is that a battery plus circuit is say for you put a, a new radio in your uh, Jeep. If you don't have the factory, like a lot of the old YJs, like my old rig, somebody's done hacked the harness to the point that they ain't got nothing left in it. So what I would do, when I do put a radio in, the memory wire for your radio is going to say a B plus on it, okay? That means it provides voltage to the radio all the time. Even sitting outside and you're inside watching TV or eating, whatever the heck you're doing, that battery plus post is providing power to that radio all the time, which provides... Um, power to retain your, you know, if you set all your programming for your radio, your favorite radio stations, that's what makes it stay the memory. It keeps the memory intact before you clock on, have to reset every time you do anything. All the radio stations, you know, it doesn't erase all that because it has the battery plus going to the radio and it has voltage all the time. Now your accessory positive circuit will be, okay, I turn my key on, it turns the radio on. Turn the key off, it turns the radio off. You know, again, it depends on one radio to another, but that's like a scenario as to what you would use battery voltage versus accessory voltage. So, there you go. I hope you guys got a little something, something from this video. So, what do you think? Did you guys pick up a little education from that? Okay, I know I didn't go into huge mega detail on this, but really, doing automotive testing, you're going to need anything from that. Depending on your meter, some of them set at 20. It's going to be the high side of your meter set because your 12 volts is going to fall under that. High is going to be like 14, maybe 14 and a half. If you're shooting 15 volts, you might want to test your alternator a little bit. But anyway, so about 14, 14, 5 is going to be your highest voltage you're going to test in a car. So there you go. Uh, so everyone, if you liked that video, hit me with that thumbs up down below. And yeah, it's got gloves, hat. It's cold out here. It's 12 degrees out here, and I am out here shooting a video. Nuts, huh? So anyway, everyone hit me with that thumbs up down below. Subscribe if you haven't. And leave me a comment down below. Tell me about your voltmeter, your multimeters, how you use them. Um, so, oh yeah, I want you guys to help me out with something. Okay, like I said, it's 12 degrees out here. And I'm not a... My shop isn't big enough to pull my Jeep into, obviously. Because it's just really just not big enough. And by the time you add in my tools and all the big crap I got in there, there's just no room. I'm lucky to get my motorcycle down the middle of it. Uh, hopefully somewhere around March, April, something like that, I'm going to have me a heated area that I can work out of to produce these videos better. Which by then it's not going to matter. It's not going to be cold. I'll tell you what, you guys give me some ideas of stuff that if I can do some form of... Uh, uh, verbal tutor tutorials that I can help you guys out with or maybe I'm drawing out schematics or something like that you guys give me some ideas that I can help you out with that I can keep these videos going for you but not stay out here freezing my butt off and get frostbite okay frostbitten frost you know what I'm saying so everyone hit me with that thumbs up subscribe if you have it and everyone peace out later y'all